All right, we're going to get the, uh, our webinar for today kicked off. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, today's webinar is about automating compliance without the staff. And just a, a little bit about Data Theorem as we get started here before I introduce our speaker. Uh, the company was founded in 2013 in the heart of Silicon Valley. Um, and it's now expanded into um, multiple countries around the world. Um, as well as we've, we've got a, a very strong leadership team that's had over t uh, 15 years in the cybersecurity space, um, which as a result has allowed us to work with a number of great customers out there uh, um, and help them with their mobile and modern AppSec practice. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to today's speaker, uh, Himanshu, if you'd like to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, thanks, Richard. Uh, my name is Himanshu. I will be talking to you for the next 20 minutes about automating compliance um, requirements, uh, both by regulatory standards, customers, and just governing bodies, uh, without staff or with little time of staff. So that's kind of the main point over the next 20 minutes. Here's the agenda items that we'll go over. Um, I'm sure you can read them for yourself. But the key thing I want to point out on this slide is the third bullet point, automate all things, including audits. I think what happens with uh, large organizations or even small where you think about automation, you think about developers, you think about code, you think about um, things traditionally in technology that you want to automate. But it's interesting to me how people kind of stop short of automating everything, including things that take up a lot of their time. So any CSO or CTO or, or large or small organization know that, hey, governing bodies or customers require us to do certain things to handle their data, protect their data appropriately. That takes a big part of your security program. If you go with the traditional natural approach, which is like, oh, we'll hire humans to augment their, their questions or basically answer their questions, um, that goes down automation. So this uh, webinar is talking about how to automate that because it takes a huge chunk of your security program which you could spend on other things. So with that, we'll dive right in. And let me just page down. All right. So first thing we're going to talk about some challenges. Um, these are not exhaustive. Uh, there's a lot of challenges out there, but a few of them that come to mind as I were was preparing the slides uh, a few weeks ago. So the first thing is, is we all know that, but it's, it's very good to look at the staff, um, the staffing problem within security. So overall, the tech market, as we all know, is growing fast in the United States and elsewhere as well. It's actually growing four times faster than the overall labor market. Um, across the board. So for access tech, and I think we all know that if you kind of read the news with how uh, big tech companies are becoming the biggest companies in the world. What's interesting is the cybersecurity market or security professionals, that's actually growing 12 times faster than the labor market. So even faster than the overall engineering market, the cybersecurity market is growing at a 12x. Now the reason why I bring that up is if you're a security professional, this basically tells you you have job security for over two decades. This is a very good stat if you're looking for a high growth, stable uh, market to basically be a part of for the next 20, 10 to 20 years. So you join an organization, you, you're a cybersecurity professional, and you feel, really, feel very good about, um, about your job. The problem is there's so many things to do, so the first thing you do is you want to grow your team or expand your team. Well, the problem is is you are dealing with one million other job wrecks out there. So if you look at the orange uh, label here on the right side, there are on average one million job openings for cybersecurity. So you have 20, you have 30 open wrecks, or you have three open wrecks. You're competing with one million other ones. If you fill those wrecks, sustaining and actually getting people to stay within the organization with a shelf life of 18 to 24 months is also difficult. So we've seen this, um, well the company like Richard said it's six years old, um, myself and the, and the other management team of Data Theorem have been in security since 1998. So I've seen staffing problems across the board for the better part of 20 years. So solving problems with staff is natural, it's a very human thing to do, but it doesn't scale. And so. So while we would love to hire staff to, to audit or to kind of fulfill our compliance requirements, it's a, it's a tough problem out there just to do with humans itself. 
So another challenge is, of course, security. That is probably one of the main challenges, if not the overall challenge that a security program has. Now this is a slide that I actually stole from the Facebook security team. They had a great blog that you can see down there on the lower right hand corner. They had a great blog earlier this year uh, about how they manage and um, basically design security for the billions. That's a B with the billions. Now, just because you don't have a billion users doesn't mean you can't borrow or even replicate your own security program from Facebook. Now, yes, we know the state Facebook security team very well. They're very good, um, a lot of good people over there. But one of the things I wanted to point out, uh, we're not going to go through the detail, but if you kind of skim this slide, what's interesting to me, um, if you look at the detail, four out of the five things, uh, I'm sorry, four out of the six things they have uh, talked about in their defense and depth approach require humans. So if you look at the fine print, it says security experts, human researchers, um, internet security uh, experts. So all these require humans. Well, when you're Facebook and you have basically an unlimited budget and you have unlimited security staff, you can design your program with people. And that's an okay thing, but that's not realistic for anyone else outside of Google, Facebook, Apple, and a few other tech companies and, and banks in New York or large banks across the world. This is just not a realistic thing that a average large or medium company can do because the talent and security um, is very hard to get and very hard to retain. So while we love this program that Facebook has designed, it's very human centric and it doesn't scale to the average organization out there um, in the United States or even abroad. And then finally, the third challenge is, of course, compliance, the main point of today's webinar. Your boss or your boss's boss or even your customers, your lead salesperson will come to you and saying, hey, we have a customer that needs to look at our data protection requirements. That's one, week one. Week two, we're like, oh, we have auditors coming on site. They have to make sure that we're compliant to PCI. Great. Week three, okay, we're a healthcare company. We have to make sure that we're compliant to HIPAA. And now it's week four, and you're like, hey, what am I supposed to be doing? Am I supposed to be doing my security job, data protection, or am I here to answer compliance questions from auditors? And if your boss, if he or she is a good boss, will say yes. Like, it's yes to both. You're going to have to do both. One does not come before the other. They have to happen at the same time. So with limited zero staff, how do you make sure you protect data while answering and adhering to all the compliance requirements out there? Now, we all know in the Venn diagram there is some overlap, but it's not a direct overlap. We've had those questionnaires that really have nothing to do with security, but you have to answer them because it's a requirement of PCI, HIPAA, or your customers. And vice versa, you have a technical piece of code that actually is a very good thing for security, but it doesn't really help you with compliance because they don't know about it. So the, the problem here is you have so many compliance demands, and if you look at companies like Amazon, if you look at this in the Amazon slide, they have a lot of compliance. But again, big companies have a lot of compliance and a lot of staff. So that's what I think a lot of people kind of make the mistake. It's like, let's solve these problems, how Facebook and Amazon solve them. And we frankly feel those programs are great, but they require staff. So you kind of have to hack it and basically say, how can we basically adhere to the things we need to both externally and internally without creating job wrecks that frankly might not ever be filled. So in terms of the challenges with security, compliance, and, uh, and everything in between, the second major overall challenge outside the security program is, of course, the developer community. Things are, people are pushing out code, developers are pushing out code quickly. Um, you can kind of see from the graphics here from the old way, which may be a waterfall method, to a new way where releases are happening, you know, several times a day, if not 100 times a week. So if you're a security program, you're there to protect data, customer and internal data, you have to be compliant, and then you walk over to the developer side of the house and releases are happening nonstop. So you can't just essentially um, interject your program into a race car that's going 100 miles per hour. So essentially a challenge, another challenge with the security team is things are changing, code is being pushed, and there's no real way to step in at the right time to say, okay, this is where security is going to fit in. And then finally, what are the developers doing? Well, they're doing a lot of things, right? So obviously they're pushing out code, they're pushing out releases, but to what? What exactly are they pushing out code to? Well, it's APIs, it's mobile apps, it's SDKs, 
It's web applications or modern web applications called single page apps. And how are they doing it? CI CD systems, app store publishing, serverless apps like Lambda and Cloud Functions. Developers are playing with a lot of things, and rightfully so, because things are getting faster, things are getting better, and things are more scalable, especially with the cloud. So not only are they releasing a lot, they're releasing to a lot of technologies, right? It's not like 30 years ago um, or even 25 years ago where you had basically a client-server model, and if you go beyond that, a mainframe model. Things were not as confined as, that, uh, as they are, or as, as, as they were back then as they are now. So essentially, the point is, is that you're going to have to be able to have a program that's compliant in many different technologies without, again, hiring a lot of staff to manage that on a day-to-day -day basis. So limits to how people traditionally do this, and I don't even want to use the word traditional. It's kind of how they currently do this, but we don't see it as a legacy thing. It's kind of how what people do now. And the first thing is, you bring in people. It's very natural. Humans are very natural to bring in people to manage the compliance part of my program, whether that's a customer, whether that's the salesperson who needs this for a customer, or again, PCI, HIPAA auditors coming on site one week or the other to make sure we're compliant. So you hire people. So what does that kind of mean? So essentially, you come in and the people love spreadsheets, right? We all love spreadsheets. Uh, CFOs still use spreadsheets for Fortune 500 companies. So there's nothing wrong with a spreadsheet because it gives you the idea of progress. Um, we have a list of things we have to do. We see green, yellow, and white, and I can now get some kind of visibility of we're going to be compliant and what are the gaps and fill all those gaps, right? And one of the gaps that we always see is that, okay, have you had outside security testing on your products, right? Um, in fact, that's a requirement for PCI and, and HIPAA. And so what do you do? You go to Black Hat, you find a security consulting company or just individuals, and you have them pen test your, uh, your product. So now you have the spreadsheet, you have the uh, consultants, and everything is kind of running along just fine, right? But again, you built a program either knowingly or unknowingly with that it's human-based, right? It's very human-intensive. Um, the problem with that, again, is you're dealing with developers who are running fast. In fact, you're dealing with developers, they're not even running fast, they're not attending the, the race because it's, it's automated for them. They're not, you know, if there's not someone in a developer organization named Jenkins. Jenkins is a system that is always running. So if your spreadsheet person shows up and your pen tester show up and then you're talking to the developers, there's not someone who's pushing a go button, it's just always running. So what happens if you're the dark gray area called test, and everything is automated around you. The release cycle is automated with Jenkins. The publishing um, cycle is automated with app, the App Store publishing process. Um, monitoring is done um, with some kind of software. Everything is automated, and here you come with spreadsheet and pen testers and saying, okay, we want to be part of this, uh, of, this, of this world too. We want to belong as well, and you're belonging with essentially the wrong tools. Spreadsheet and pen testers don't really relate to Jenkins and automated and batch releases on a daily or weekly basis. So essentially, this silly analogy on this silly slide is like it's like bringing a Franklin planner and a old style phone to a modern meeting. You could do it. You, there's nothing wrong with doing it, but you're going to kind of look like you don't belong. And with developers or basically any kind of uh, modern software stack, when you don't belong, you kind of get ignored and you're kind of like uh, someone who people have to work around rather than work with. So yes, you can bring your old Franklin planner to your, uh, to, your, to your release cycle meeting, but when the guy or girl named Jenkins doesn't show up and then you realize Jenkins is not a person, it's a, it's a system, then you're kind of realizing you're probably using the wrong tools for the existing environment. And that's really what we're saying. Don't use the wrong tools for a highly automated software development process. So that brings us to automate the audit, right? So a lot of webinars, especially from security companies like us, will start talking about what you need to do to automate or what you need to do to get better. Now, the world needs some kind of recommendations, but always being told what to do is kind of ivory tower in my, in my uh, opinion. What we're going to ask you to do is push back on your vendors. Your vendors, your security vendors, you have hired them, one, to help protect data, whether that's your customer data or your internal data, that's what you've hired them to do. But just like your boss or your boss's boss tells you that, hey, 
you have to protect data and you have to be compliant and there is no priority, both of them have to be done at the same time, you need to push that back on your vendors. You need to ask them, what is your compliance story? And if they have one, they'll tell you right away. And that's where they maybe go from vendors to partners. If they don't have one, they might give you a glossy look, but you need to force that upon them. They need to be your partner because you can't be a security company and not offering vendors, I'm sorry, not offering compliance tools to your customers and actually think that you're helping them. Data protection is our goal, yes, but also compliance. We have to make sure as a security industry, we're providing things to our customers where they can get their job done without being in spreadsheet, spreadsheet worlds and, and manual, manual pen tests all the time. So um, that kind of covers what I was just talking about in this slide, so I'll skip over it. Um, so I'm going to slip, um, slip into a quick demo of what we're kind of talking about. Um, so I will share my browser here. So um, if you're seeing my browser safely, you'll see the data theorem portal. Uh, don't worry about the details. That's not the point of this kind of demo. But you'll see right here on top, we have regulatory compliance as one of our main product offerings, right? Now, the developers in the room will fall asleep to this, and as they should. But if you're a security professional, this is what you should demand of your vendors. And again, a lot of your vendors are probably already doing this. You need to bake that into the process. So essentially, when your auditors come on site, whether it's GDPR, the good old GDPR, everyone's four-letter word, favorite four-letter word from Europe, PCI with credit cards, HIPAA with uh, medical information, FTC with privacy, or OWASP with the standards, or even COPA with uh, children, your vendors should have a story where it says, we're going to help you stay secure, and again, we're going to help you be compliant. So you go to their portal, you click on one of these certifications, and that's the story. No spreadsheets, no consultants. It's right there baked into the product. Uh, as releases happen, as fix happens, it all gets updated, and it's all automated so you don't have to disrupt a very fast system called DevOps with a slow system with spreadsheets and, and human, human pen testers. Going back to the slides, um, the other demo, um, well, before I go to the other demo, so this is a good example. I just showed labels uh, like PCI, you'll see it here, back to the Amazon label, HIPAA as well. So again, there's, there's obviously more depth in these compliance than just one part of it, which is um, API or mobile app security. But again, your vendors can, you can put this together to sell a story to your auditors or to your uh, internal salesperson saying, we have a program that scales that's always on, and yes, it's compliant. And then these logos are easier to get because it's automated with your security products and your lifecycle rather than one-offs, again, with spreadsheets or, um, um, or, or, or manual testing. Um, now, the second demo I'll show is uh, certifications. So one of the things we just did with a customer a few weeks ago that worked out really well is a customer um, of ours um, had their lead salesperson come in and said, hey, we need a pen test of our mobile apps and we need it uh, before the end of the year. Um, and so obviously two people, two weeks is the kind of standards uh, and it's, it gets expensive. In terms of time, not so much dollars, but the time is, is you kind of slow down development for two to four weeks consultants come in, developers come in, all these things happen, right? So we told our customers, hey, that's great. We can recommend a few pen testing companies. Um, I happened to found one uh, a few years ago. Um, but at Data Theorem, what we can do is automate that process. So you go ahead and click on the app that you're, uh, that you're wondering about and you click export, and it actually will give you the, um, the, the report uh, to show you what you're doing and how you're doing it. So essentially, if I go back to the slides, um, you'll see here, it's kind of in small print, but we're basically able to show our customer salesperson over the last three months, this app has been scanned and tested over 45 times, 39 issues have been closed in those three months, and five remain open. Now, if it was a pen testing report, those five issues that are open would be monopolizing in the unfair way the engineering team over the next year. What we were able to do is show the salesperson like, hey, go show the, uh, the prospect essentially 39, or I'm sorry, 45 tests have been done in three months. 39 issues have been closed in three months. 
And it's all natural because all these issues are feeding up into JIRA, so this is all happening naturally. So we were able to basically prevent a slowdown of the process uh, with pen testers or, or manual, uh, manual testing with spreadsheets and basically automate that and bake that into um, the life cycle. And so now, essentially, when a salesperson needs some kind of certification, they can get that immediately because the product allows that to happen in real time. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to a, uh, a customer of ours, Keith, who is the CTO of Wildflower. Uh, we have a few minutes of his time, um, who's going to talk about his experience, not only with our data trust certificate, but with using our product in his own fast-paced environment. So Keith, if you're out there, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you at this time. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, just an introduction. My name is Keith Yeager. I'm CTO at a company called Wildflower. We're a startup in the healthcare space. Um, and so we brought in data theorem to help us solve probably kind of three different, three different problems. Um, the first is, I mean, we're a small startup um, and our customers are the largest insurance companies, Medicaid companies, hospital chains, and um, even a lot of the large tech companies that he mentioned earlier are our customers. Um, and all of those customers, because we're in healthcare, put us through security reviews. Um, each of them are cust custom to them. They all have their own security organizations that have their own standards and their own questions. Um, and, um, you know, for a small company like us to be able to keep up with uh, groups, you know, these security teams. In many cases, the security teams of these companies are far larger than the, our whole company. Um, Data Serum has allowed us to run these processes automatically, um, provide the reports, um, and it, you know, and have it accepted by these large organizations with, you know, with, because it's very clear, um, on, you know, it gives a very clear record of what we're accomplishing. Uh, the second thing that we've tried to do is we're also getting certification in uh, in healthcare. It's a high it's a high trust audit, um, and again, um, Data Theorem provides us the documentation for the security aspects of what we've been doing in a way that normally would require huge amounts of effort of people coming in and auditing us and uh, forcing us to to demonstrate proof and so on and so on and so forth. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention is that um, we're surviving just fine in an environment where we're getting this kind of security scrutiny. Um, and we have a security team of zero, <laughs> which is all we can afford. So I've got, I've, I've got a guy that manages, you know, our server environment and is our ops guy, and we've got some programmers. Um, but what Data Theorem allows us to do because of the way they document the issues and they provide suggestions and coded samples is that we end up using Data Theorem as our secure, both our security training and our way of communicating about security internally. Um, and in that way, we've been able to distribute the security work, um, you know, kind of push it down throughout the organization rather than having, you know, a dedicated people, uh, you know, to the security work. Um, so, you know, I really, for, for a small organization, for us, this has been a godsend. Um, and, uh, you know, there's new products coming out from uh, Data Theorem to help us with monitoring of endpoints. Um, we will eagerly um, probably attach ourselves to all of these things because they allow us to, you know, they give us the leverage to act like a big company, even though, you know, we're just a handful of people. Um, I think that's, that's the short bit. Um, if there's any questions or anything else you guys would like me to talk about, let me know. Yeah, Keith, thank you very much for joining us um, and, and taking the time to talk a little bit about your success in, uh, in this space. Um, with that, we've kind of come to the end of our, of our webinar. Uh, we did want to reserve a little bit of time. If anybody does have any questions, uh, feel free to post them in the Q&A panel uh, within the, uh, the webinar on the right-hand side, and uh, we We'll go ahead and give you a few minutes to do so, and then we'll answer those uh, accordingly. All right, so we have our first question.
Jen, and uh, I'll, I'll give this to uh, to Hamanshu as well. Uh, do you have do you help customers with auto generating reports for auto auditors? Yes, yes, that's a great question. Um, in fact, I will demo that. Uh, I always like to answer questions with demos if possible, so you know it's real. So, Richard, if you don't mind, if you could um, share the share the ball back to me. Um, so, in our product, and I don't want to make this a product pitch, so uh, I'll ignore the. Uh, the UI, but there's a button where you can click on our uh, our product, and it essentially has this certification. So this is something that's externally facing. Now, security issues are very sensitive. We all know that. So we're not a big fan of sharing that to the world or even prospects because, quite frankly, it's none of their business. But what do they need to know? They need to know you're on it. They need to know there's a program. They need to know when something happens tomorrow, you're not kind of running around, you know, frantic, that when something happens tomorrow, there's a program in place to take care of it. And so this is kind of um, our certificate that we hand out with to all our customers um, that they can use at whatever time they want. That's a, basically a button click away that talks about the criteria, what we do, and then more importantly, what I, what I was talking about is about the program itself. So this customer, um, so I misspoke earlier, it was 43 tests in the last three months with 39 issues closed. This kind of statement tells a prospect that, hey, there's a program in place. And do we have issues? Yes, everyone has issues. Like everyone has security issues. We have five of them. But you can tell 39 to five ratio that we have a place or we have a program to fix those issues. So uh, we're very proud of this because we're not trying to say everyone's perfect. If you're looking for those certificates that say A plus or unhackable uh, or unbreakable, we all know those aren't real, and, and no big or small enterprise believes them. But this is a certificate that you can get from our uh, from our product or any one of your major vendors, and essentially it solves that pen test criteria. But even more so, instead of a one-time pen test, it really speaks to the program. And as we all know, we care more about the program because something will happen in the future. You just want to make sure uh, your security or your partners have their security program in place, um, whether it's with zero people with Keith or 200 people like with Facebook. Either way, you want to make sure they're on it and it's visible. And of course, you have metrics to uh, make sure they're in compliance. Perfect. Thank you, Hamachu. Uh, we have one other question. Um, any focus on FSMA moderate and NSIPOM? Um, well, those are two kind of uh, areas within our existing compliance um, items that we do cover. Um, so essentially, the security testing programs and the requirements are covered in our standard testing process. Um, and so a little bit more detailed question in terms of what we cover, but essentially what we cover with our mobile app scan and our APIs do adhere to those, uh, to those regulations. Um, we don't have a certificate specifically for them, but this would be it because both of them require to make sure you're doing certain coverage. So this scanning criteria, obviously we've lifted out the popular ones. It, do, it does cover those two items as well. And what we would submit to those firms is essentially this data trust report saying, hey, this is what we're covering, this is what we're doing. You can see things are verified or not, and essentially less about the program, but to make sure about page two, the scanning criteria itself. So if I understood the question correctly, it would be covered by this page of the, uh, the certification. Perfect. Um, thank you very much, Hamanshu. Um, that's all the questions we have. We'll go ahead and uh, stop here. And then, obviously, if you guys wanted to learn more, you can always reach out to us uh, by visiting datatheorem.com. And uh, we're either requesting a demo to get a more in-depth uh, de uh, view of our platform, or just feel free to contact us, and we'll be happy to answer any further questions you may have. Thank you very much, everyone.